Hello ladies and gents and welcome back to the Colour Cave. It's Gem here. I apologise for my hat hair. I was out with my cows this morning and it is far too cold today to not have a hat on. This will be the last video before Cavemas, so you will have no video on Thursday of this week, but the Cavemas videos start on Saturday, which is the 21st. Today's pickings are coming from Ticket to Dreams by Carolina Kubikowska. And honestly, the, the nameplate page in this book is adorable and I can't wait to get started on it. The reason I am so excited about this is not the book, even though I really like the book, but it's because today we are going to be doing this in watercolour. So let's just go to top down view and we can get going. <music> Right, so we're going to be working primarily with the Windsor and Newton Cotman pan. Uh, this is the Studio Set of 48. Yeah, it's actually one of my very favourites. In addition to that, though, whether I don't know whether I'm going to use them or not yet, I have the Paul Rubens set of pearlescent paints. This is a 24 set, and I just like them because they're really shiny. I don't know if and where I'm going to use these yet, but we can uh, we can work it out as we go along. Everything will be fine. I've got a selection of paint brushes here as well. This is a brush uh, that's just a cheap. When I actually came with a set of the Faber Castell gelatos and I use this for mixing colours. In addition to that I've got a size 6 round and this is the Milan brush. I got this in a scroller box. I really really like this paintbrush and I want to get them in different sizes but I can't find them anywhere so if anybody knows where I can pick up some more of these Milan brushes I would really appreciate it. You could let me know in the comments. I've got a size 8 round and this is a Windsor & Newton Cotman brush. This is kind of my uh, one job does everything paintbrush and uh, it's just good for slightly larger areas when you, you, know, you need to cover a bit more of a surface. I've also got a large brush in case I want to use a wash. This is a really cheap brush from a pack from Tiger and uh, it's just, again, it's the same sort of thing if I wanted to do like a wishy-washy background, I can do it with that. So I think what I'd like to do first, deal with this sort of background colour. Because this looks to me like clouds down here and then we've got this ink bottle and these little stars. And I do want a really nice sort of... Uh, I was going to say like a textured look to it, you know, I don't want it to be absolutely smooth. So the first colour that I'm using is the Rose Madder Hue. And I just want to get some of this down in here. This, this little flat brush is great for this, I really like these. I've got a couple of these little paint brushes and I'm just going to keep them solely for this purpose. The quality of them seems to be quite good. I've used this one for a while now and it's not shown any signs of any, you know, wear on the bristles or anything like that. So any cheap paintbrush will do for things like this though if you want to kind of follow the same idea. It's not a necessity and it's not even something that's suggested with watercolour but I just like to have a separate brush because it means I can keep my brushes that I'm actually using to paint with a little bit cleaner. And because it's flat as well it picks up quite a lot of colour off the pan. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of water in here, just literally a couple of drops and we'll mix that up and that looks quite vivid so that's good. And I've just got a couple of uh, scraps of cheap watercolour paper here and it's just to test out the colour. I want a lesser dilution of this as well so I'm just going to do the same thing again, I'll just do it in the, the palette next to it like this. For this second one I'm just adding a lot more water, give it a swirl about, that's a technical term you know. And you can see there that's given us a much more delicate wash. So we'll go with that to start with and we'll just see how we get on I think. So I'm going to use this big brush and the one of the reasons I wanted to watercolour in this book is the, the paper is really really thick, it's almost like cardstock so it can withstand a bit of water. If you do use a lot of water and a lot of layers though it will soak through to the other side. Now thankfully with this it's a blank page on the other side so it's not so much of an issue, I'm not overly concerned about it. So I just want to get some water down first of all and I'm not absolutely soaking the page the way I would do with with watercolour paper it's actually a very light layer of water but the problem with this because it's not technically watercolour paper the water soaks into the page quite quickly but even if you can keep it damp and you can see that's it starting to buckle already it just makes it a bit easier because we are going to have to go in sort of sections I'll just try and sort of avoid these stars a little bit. So there we are, we've got damp paper, so that's a start. And I'm going to work from the bottom up. So I'm going to put a little bit more water down here and I'm just going to, as I say, try and work in sections. 
and I'm going to grab my number six brush and I'm going into the darkest shade first because I want it to be dark down in the bottom here and you can see that as long as you work quickly you can get around this fairly sharpish and just work away. I say I want a, almost like a kind of blotchy effect so I'm kind of half brushing half dabbing here. There we go, we can get up in here as well, it's nice. I'm just going to add a wee bit more water to this part here. I'm just working in these little sections, just let it do its own thing. Try and come up around the clouds here as well. The nice thing about Carolina's book here is that she has a very sort of loose sketching style and that really lends itself to what we're doing here. You know, you don't have to be really precise with your brush strokes. You can just kind of, you know, if you go over the lines a little bit, it's not, it's not going to look out of place and it's not going to look really messy or anything like that. So that's kind of what we're, that's the kind of style that we want to go for, I think. Whee! There's something really fun about this. I really enjoy it. Now, as we move up here... I've got a big splodge there that wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> I'm going to go into the, the more diluted one. I'll just blend that in a wee bit. It's almost like uh, I wanted to go for like an extra layer of cloud here, if you know what I'm saying. Like where, where this join between the two different dilutions of the paint is. You know, I wanted that to be marked because we've got these clouds in the front as well. So it's just kind of like building up on that. So if I do this back part quickly as well, maybe somewhere along there, that's pretty good. And go back to the, the heavier dilution. There you go, that's just running out there. That's just what we wanted to happen because that makes it quicker. We can do a little bit in here as well. Because she does have, there are some pencil lines very faintly in the back there where, you know, there may be supposed to be clouds in the distance or something. So we're just going to play on that. We're going to use it to our advantage. And then back to this lesser dilution. Catch this before it dries out so we can continue to follow this on like this. And we'll just take some more water with our, our big brush here. Bring it up to around there. And then we can just get going with this. This looks like a little constellation. It's really cute. I like it. Right now I've kind of gone round the, the, the fiddly bits. We can go in with this big brush now and we can just go to town. And this will let us work a little bit more quickly. Covering that larger area. Try and get rid of my brush strokes at the edge there a wee bit. Work our way around this planet ever so slightly. Now obviously if you are using a dilution like this there is a lot of water in the paint so it's not quite as imperative to have that wash on the paper already. I do have a bit of a line here. And as you can see, there's nothing on here. I'm not protecting this page at all. If I just show you this very quickly. The paper has buckled, but there's nothing actually soaked through, which is great. So we're just going to leave that to dry before we add in any more detail. And this paint does dry quite quickly on this paper, so we won't have to wait too long. While we're doing that, I'm going to mix up some of an indigo colour, which I'm going to use for this ink pot down here. Now... We do have a straight indigo in this palette and it's, it's actually one of my favourite colours to use. And that sounds really boring but it's uh, I, I, ha I like things like that. I like using grey and I like using these sort of darker moody colours. There we go. But you can see how rich that colour is. It's lovely. And it's instantly turned my, my water. <laughs> Again, we can just do the same. We'll, we'll plop a couple of splodges in there. I've kind of got a system for watercolour now. I only started watercolouring. I was looking back, I think it was February, and it's taken me this length of time to sort of get into a groove and get my own little system set up. And uh, when, once you kind of sort that out, it makes it a bit a bit easier because I did find watercolouring really overwhelming to start with. Some of you will know, will remember that very first video. 
and I was so frustrated. I followed like a tutorial and I was so frustrated because I couldn't get anything to do what I wanted to do. And I'm really glad that I persevered because I really, really enjoy watercolour now. And it's actually really nice to do it in a colouring book as well. So I'm just putting uh, like one layer of this down on this bottle. These remind me of the Windsor and Newton drawing ink bottles. They're that sort of traditional shape. I really like them. There we go. The other thing as well is like we've got quite thick lines. You know, the, the line work is quite chunky on this bottle. So we're not in too much danger of going over into our slightly damp area and it causing us any issues, which is is really nice as well. As I say, that this paper seems to suck up the, the paint and the water really quickly. So we won't be long in and having it dried off. I'm going to shift over to my little Paul Rubens palette here and one of the things I find with these pans is if you pre-wet them then you get on a little bit better with them whereas I find with the Windsor and Newton ones I don't really have to do that. So what I have is one of these little Derwent spritzer things and you can buy you can buy like any kind of atomizer, but it's the size of this one, it's a good size. I always cover up my swatches because I don't want them getting damp and I just kind of like use my hand and just a couple of sprays all the way down there and just let that sit for a minute, let it fester for a wee bit. <laughs> and I'm going to use, uh, there is a colour called Royal Gold here and it's lovely. And I'm going to use this in on this sort of plate on the front of the bottle. So the Milan brush has a really nice point on it and I am I'm not actually diluting this with any more water other than just what I've sprayed on it there because I want this to be nice and rich. So I'm going to have to work my way around the lettering but that's okay. It's easy enough to do with this particular brush because as I say the point's really good on it and I'm really enjoying this paintbrush. I'll just work this in. The other paints that would work really well for this if you're wanting to go with a sort of similar idea is uh, Gansai Tambi starry colours paints there's like it's like a selection of kind of gold colours I would use those for for this as well and again we can build this up in layers if we want to we'll wait and see how vibrant it looks once it's dry so interesting things that have been happening I never made it to Ikea I talked to them I think it was one of my other colouring chat videos about always going uh, via Ikea when I head home to the west coast to go and see my family and I never made it to Ikea because the slip road off the motorway was shut. I would have had to have like basically made like a huge sort of circumnavigation to get there. So I just left it. Anyway, I uh, this this coming week I've decided I'm going down and my friend from home is going to come up and meet me. So we're going to have like a morning in Ikea. <laughs> I've got a few things that I need to pick up, but I'm going to see the the desk people, I keep calling them that, uh, the design team to see about getting a new desk for the cave and we'll hopefully be doing that the start of the year, maybe not straight away, it depends how much money it's going to cost me because I really, I, I just can't carry on like this much longer, the, the place is just like a disaster zone all the time and I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with that and I don't like to live my life like that, so... It's time to get it sorted. So we'll let that dry and see how it looks. It looks really dark, but if I tilt it in the light, you can see how shiny it is. Ooh, <laughs> it looks good. I'm trying to figure out what this is. I'm not entirely sure. It, it, it looks like an arrow. Or again, in, in Carolina's book, she does draw a lot of mushrooms and sort of, you know, toadstool -y type things like these ones down here. So I don't know, I don't know if that's what that's supposed to be. It looks very pointy to be fair. We can, we can make that a fabulous colour just for fun. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I don't know what it is, but I've just decided we're going to make it turquoise <laughs> because why not? Well, technically, uh, in the Paul Rubens palette, it is called Deep Interference Green, but it's it's like a, a very pale turquoise colour. Ooh, and it's so shiny. Now, I did find it's funny now as well. I do like the Winsor & Newton Cotman brushes, and this size 8, I've had it for a while, but... It's, it doesn't seem to be aging very well and it's lost the point on it. And I used to be able to use a size 8 brush to do things like this, you know, and just have the same brush for everything, which was great. But over time, you can see the difference in the in the bristles. 
and you don't have that precision with it although it's a bigger brush head anyway but you just don't have the precision so I've stopped using it for that and I've gone down to this little Milan number no. six and I'm interested to see how well this ages and to see if, it, if it's going to keep its shape and I have um, I have you know sort of researched it and what to do to help you know, keep, reshape it and keep the shape and things like that. And I do all those things, but the, the Cotman brush just doesn't seem to want to do it now. The, the ferrule's pretty wobbly now as well. Um, you know, I can feel it wobbling against the handle. And I have taken care not to leave it dipped in water and all those sorts of things. And also the, the lacquer on the actual handle started to peel away, which is why I've got tape around it. So, I mean, these are good brushes. They're, they're good quality brushes, but they just don't seem to age very well. So that's uh, that's a shame, but they're not they're not expensive either. So if you were you know if you were really keen and you wanted to use them all the time, it wouldn't cost you a fortune to, you know, to replace them every time. Okay, so we're nice and dry now, and as you can see, the paper has buckled quite considerably. This is not a problem in this book. I have painted other pages in this, and when I'm finished, all I do is once it's absolutely dry, of course, I just stick it under a stack of really heavy books and leave it for a day or two, and it, it really sort of flattens it back down. And you can see there's pages in here, and some of these have been painted you can see they're a wee bit darker and they are they're pretty flat so this this doesn't concern me it's something i don't like in other coloring books and i tend not to use a lot of wet mediums in my other coloring books but this seems to be able to take it and you don't end up with a really sort of battered you know dog-eared looking coloring book right so i'm going to go back with my indigo now and i just want to add in some darker patches so I'm going to go in with another layer and it's just the same dilution it is starting to uh, evaporate a little bit because it's quite warm in the cave as I said in the introduction it is absolutely freezing outside I think it's about minus two the last time I checked and we're now like the middle of the day so it's uh, it's pretty cold so the, the the cave's nice and warm today I've also got the the open fire on in our like in our kind of lounge room so that's going to be nice and warm later on once I'm finished in here and I go through. That's what I'm talking about. I might put a wee bit down here. Like I'm not following any rules here. I'm just kind of like working on aesthetics and deciding what looks pretty. <laughs> and that's half the fun with this. That's why I really enjoy it. Follow the hatching. That's a good rule. And a wee bit in there. Okay, so up here, I've got a few sort of streaks here. You can just see one there. And I, I'm trying to decide whether to play on that or whether to try and mask it. And I think I'm just going to go with it. And I'm maybe going to add in another few here and there. Give that idea of maybe some more wispy type clouds. Now all I want to do is add in a little bit more of this more concentrated version in here. So I'm just going to pop a wee bit of water down because it is quite dark and then I've got this pale patch. So I just want to try and sort of even that out a little bit. I have a tiny dog at my foot. She's she's kind of like, and she's not nudging me, but she's kind of like rubbing up against me to let me know that she's there. I don't really know what she wants. This is the smallest dog, our oldest dog. Hi, Woo. I think she just came to say hello. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell with her sometimes now because she's uh, she spends a lot of time just sort of like staring at things and, you know, generally being old. And it's sometimes it's kind of hard to figure out if she's actually after something or whether she's just happy sitting chilling out. But we're looking after her. She's not quite 15. Okay. And I'm going to do what I've done down there. I'm going to do it in here as well. I'm just kind of dabbing. I want to get some really nice rich colour in. Just around this sort of ink bottle area. I'll just put a tiny dab of water in so I can start to blend that out a wee bit. And I'm trying to avoid this star here as much as possible now because I do want that to be able to stand out a little bit. I'm slightly concerned because Mr Jem has just driven past the, the cave window in his truck and he's heading away from the farm, like out of the farm. And he's supposed to be in the yard behind our house working with cows this morning. Um, so that means he's either run out of something, forgotten something or something's wrong. 
if something was wrong though I would assume that he would have come in and told me <laughs> so it, can, it can't be disastrous <laughs> not, not yet anyway okay that looks a bit better and I'm quite enjoying this sort of you know this being the focal point rather than where you put your name and I think that that darker colour going down on the top there, it's just kind of drawing your eye into the ink bottle. So, yeah, I kind of like that. So for my clouds, I want purpley colours. I think I'm going to go with the dioxazine purple. So that this is the dioxazine and see, with this is mauve and purple lake. But when you see these next to the colours that we've been using, they are very similar. So I want that sort of... A bit more of like a, a differentiation and the dioxazine purple's obviously got more blue in it so that's what we're going to plump for. I don't know how helpful the, you guys find my explanations when it comes to things like this. I don't know whether it's something that you're interested in but I just feel if I kind of share like my, my logic behind it or my thought process behind it, not necessarily for you to follow along to the letter but if it helps people make decisions on picking colours or paints or whatever, then I figured, you know, someone might find it helpful somewhere. So for these clouds, I'm going to do a sort of diluted layer, first of all, and then after that, I'm going to go in with the neat paint on the second layer and put in some, some sort of like richer colour. So again, I'll just test this out here. Yeah, that's quite... Okay, we'll go with that. Okay, so I'm looking at how my indigo's dried in and it's really, really wishy-washy and I want it to be a bit bolder than that. So I'm going to go straight from the pan. Some water to the tip of my brush and get to that while it's still wet. I can get a nice... There we go. That's what I'm talking about. I'll do the same down here, just where, just where I was before. Just thin this out a little bit and can drag it round up the side there. And then I'll add a wee bit more in here. Just some of these wee nooks and crannies here. Okay, so I'm back to this sort of wider brush now with the, the slightly rounded tip on it. I think that, is that a filbert brush? I can't remember. And I'll take some of this purple. And see, we can go really gently with this to begin with. You don't have to go mad and just find out how it's going to sit on the paper, how it's going to soak in. But I'm just going a section at a time. I wouldn't advise trying to get really smooth flat washes in a colouring book like this because see, the paper really wasn't designed for for watercolour and because of its absorbency you'll struggle and you'll just be fighting with the paper all the time. Now I'm sure if you are a seasoned watercolourist and you're quite experienced you could do it. I imagine you could do. And I'm not saying that it can't be done but it's just... You know, it's more pleasurable when you're not fighting against your mediums and that's why we have certain papers for certain things. But sometimes, you know, you want to just go outside the bubble a wee bit like this. So, but you can see how quickly I'm having to work and those brush strokes are sitting already. So, you just, as long as you just kind of keep moving. And you can see I'm following this line round here because this is a separate cloud. So, if I've got a brush stroke that dries there, that's not going to be... It's not going to be blatantly obvious that it's a brush stroke if you see what I'm saying. And that just gives you a bit of breathing space for, for working your way round. And the good thing about these brushes is you can tip it on its side like this and it gives you, you know, like a much finer surface to actually paint with and you can get in some of the kind of smaller areas without too much hassle. And then you can just flip it over when you get to a larger area. See, I've got a sort of line here as well, so we'll go in there. If you kind of pick your areas, you know, if you kind of like plan it out a wee bit first, then that makes things a wee bit easier for you when you actually come to put the paint down. Let's see, right now we're just looking for that sort of first layer of colour. And it's something, again, if you're a regular viewer, you will know that I do a lot. I like to just get one sort of base layer of colour down. And I'm not usually too particular about it. And then once that's down, I can start sort of being a bit more careful. <laughs> Aside from using pencil, which obviously I really enjoy, that this this is just great fun. I love this, and I could quite happily if I if I had time, I would quite happily sit and do two or three pages once this is dry. You know, right now, just stay in the cave and do it. Uh, that's how much I enjoy it. Be whistling a wee tune while I'm doing this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> 
Again, the, the lifting properties of uh, the paint on this paper are pretty, pretty poor because it's not watercolour paper. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to take this off. That's lifting a little bit, not much. There we go, I don't want to tear up the paper too much, so we'll just, just leave it be. Right, okay, so again, we can leave that to dry a little bit. And then we can start putting in maybe some definition and shape around these clouds. We've got these little planets. And I'm thinking that maybe we should stick with these kind of like turquoisey type shades. And then we've got these stars to do as well. So I maybe pick out uh, one of the Paul Rubens colours. So I've got one here called Shiny Blue. And it's quite quite a delicate little colour. I'll turn this slightly so that I can work here. It's rather nice though. It's very pleasant. And I'm going to avoid that hatched area. I'll maybe just sort of like brush into it very gently because I, I want that, that hatching to be visible because it's all, you know, it's part of the sort of characteristic of the picture. I'll also give that a wee tilt so you can see the shine on it. That's lovely. Got a lot more available space for paint in this one. <laughs> In the interests of keeping this cohesive, I'm going to go back to this royal gold colour that I've used down here for the the rings round the round the planets. Just take my time. Now this is where a really pointy paintbrush comes into its own, because you can get so much precision. And before I started painting, I was probably just ignorance. I, I never associated precision with a paintbrush before then. When I thought of paintbrush, I always think of like big, broad, you know, really sort of expressive strokes. But you can actually get a considerable level of detail if you've got the right brush and, yeah, you know, you've got a little bit of practice under your belt. Help the old fine motor skills. Okay, with this pointy arrow thing that I'm not really sure what it is. <laughs> I just want to make it a little bit more interesting. So again, back to the Paul Rubens set, I've got this lovely dark blue called Symphony Blue and I'm just going to use it to try and kind of like 3D shape it up if you don't. <laughs> so I'm going to put a wee bit down. Oh, my brush is too dry. Oh, come on, come on. Down one side here and then I'll maybe do the opposite side there. And I'm just going to leave that to dry and see what it looks like. I know that's kind of difficult for you to see. I'll zoom in in a little minute and show you. You can see it just along the edge there. And I'll build that up a little bit so that it's a little bit more obvious. Now for the little dots in our constellation and the remaining stars, I'm going to use, again, another, another shiny colour from the Paul Rubens set. And this time I am going up towards the Deep Interference Yellow which is this one here. Because of the layering capabilities of these paints as well, the, the more layers you put on, the more shiny it gets, which is really nice. So you can have a really subtle shine or you can go absolutely ham and make it crazy, crazy shiny. As long as you let the layers dry in between time, you can build up some... It's, it's actually quite opaque, even though it's watercolour. And you can see even just there I'm going over, it's covering up quite a lot of the black line work. So that has its advantages and its disadvantages, but for what we're doing here, as long as you pick and choose where you want the paint to go down, and it's actually quite good because it's where I've gone over with my wash, I can cover it up without too much of an effort. Got a little star peeking out behind the splodges here as well. Oh, thank goodness for pointy paintbrushes. So the, the shiny bits are really popping out now because there's a few of them. Um, you can see they're looking pretty nice. I don't want to put too much more on this, actually. Yeah, I think that'll do. I like these paints, they're so fun. I'm going to go back to my number eight round that's slightly wobbly. <laughs> and I'm going to go back to this dioxazine. So what I have in my palette, you can see where my paints are starting to evaporate and it's just starting to happen with this purple. So I'm going to add in a little bit more of that dioxazine purple from the Winsor & Newton palette. Make it a bit richer. And again, I can test it out here on my wee square of paper. No, we need more than that. There we go. That's better. That's more what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start down in this right-hand side. And again, this is back to the whole I'm left-handed thing. That's so I don't put my hand in it when I go along. I just want to sort of pop in a few bits and bobs here. But as I go along, um, my number six brush is wet. Not absolutely soaking, but it's been dipped in water and then I can just sort of tease out some of this 
to give it a bit of a softer edge as well. And I can see there's a line there that Carolina has left in it. So it looks as if she's almost kind of erased it, but not entirely, again, which is a characteristic of her of her art style, which I really, really enjoy. And I can just soften this out. So I'm trying not to touch with this damp brush. I'm trying not to touch where I put that initial stroke down with this number eight. I'm just kind of making this one up, guys. <laughs> this line doesn't exist. And there's one round here, which I quite like the look of. Again, I'm just kind of like picking and choosing. I'm not deliberately going around every area where there's a pencil line. And you just have to kind of use your own judgment for that. Decide where, where it would where it would look good in your eyes. I'll follow the line of this one round as well. To maybe there. Bring that round to sort of fade it out down the bottom so it's joining up with that other part. I have a really deep one in here, so I'm gonna make this quite wide. And just bring it out. Try and keep a sort of soft shape to it as well, you know, keep it that sort of cloud-like shape. And this looks like a another one that's kind of like a hatched area. So we'll go with that. Just draw that out a little bit. But if I just lift this up a wee bit so that we can see down the bottom, it's just build up some darker colour down here and I'm just going to do it in like layers with the washes. So oh, my dioxazine, if I just twist this around a little bit, my dioxazine is obviously quite concentrated now so all I'm going to do is whack some more water in it and I'll just give it a wee mix up to get it back to more what we were using before. And you can achieve a bit more of a subtle effect. Yeah, that's not bad. With, you know, just doing a couple of layers like this. So I'm just going to work quite quickly. And just smoosh this down. Now, obviously, because it's transparent, although it's quite dark, when we go over the areas that we've just done, as long as they're dry, you're effectively putting another layer of paint on top of that as well. So that's going to darken the darker bits down anyway. So you're, you're just layering it up. I think we'll take that to maybe there. And I, all I'm doing here is mimicking these lines because you can see that Carolyn has put in sort of uh, these side to side strokes. So all I'm doing is just following that on. And it's just so that it kind of fits in with the picture. But I only want it really on this bottom part. I don't want it to go too far up. So there we go, that's a bit better. So you can see you've got this darker part down the bottom and you've still got these nice little details but you're not sort of, you know, it's not really in your face. So all that leaves me now to do is put my name in and I am going to do it with a paintbrush just to keep in the spirit of things. I have no guarantee how well this is going to go but I'm just going to do it in plain black. I'll have to decide whether I want to do it as my signature or whether I would do it in my handwriting but I think my handwriting looks awfully like this so I think I'm going to go with that. I'd, I've never tried my handwriting with a paintbrush though so this might be interesting. <laughs> I might regret this. I'm glad I've only got three letters to worry about. <laughs> it wouldn't be so great if my name was like um, Geraldine or something like that. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel really sorry. My, my heart goes out to you guys that have got really long names. Okay. I'm kind of scared to do this. I don't want to ruin this now. Oh, jeez. Right, I'll just try it. Oh no. <laughs> okay, that's not bad for the first letter. <laughs> Lettering is not my strong point. And the fact that you have to write from left to right makes it very difficult when you're left-handed as well. Especially when you're working with wet paint. But I can't do it backwards, it would just wouldn't look right at all. <sighs> okay, more <laughs> than one letter to go. Oh jeez. I can't, I can't even like join this up properly. I'm not I'm not clever enough to do. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's not bad. I'll take that as a win. <laughs> oh wow, well, these things are so fun. Right, I'll just move all this out of the way now. 
Oh dear. And there we have it. That is our finished nameplate page for Ticket to Dreams. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've had great fun doing this and it's nice to do something that's quite simple and straightforward but still looks really, really pretty and I think you will agree that uh, this looks pretty nice. I'm really, really pleased with it. So I'm just going to let this waft dry for a wee while and then as I said before I'll close the book and I'll put it under some really heavy books and just leave it for a few days and that will help straighten out the buckling because if I just turn this on its side you can see it's pretty warped. So there we go, let's have a wee look at the shiny bits as well. That's just a nice touch, it's not overpowering, it's just, just nice. So, I hope you've enjoyed this guys and I hope it's encouraged you to try and watercolour in some of your colouring books as well because it's something that I really, really enjoy doing. I want to thank you very much for watching. As always, I welcome your comments. Please feel free to leave them down below and we shall see you for Cavemas on Saturday the 21st of December. Have a great day everyone and bye for now.